Welcome to this Auto Vista video tutorial. In this video tutorial, we want to show the water reflection functionality of Auto Vista, and therefore we use here one of our demo datasets that you can download from our download area. In this case, we have here some water reflection, and we can see here that on the water itself, the sun uh, is reflected and therefore single images have here more on the southern part illuminations and on the northern part they are in this case here more naturally in this case included. And we want to show here how you can handle in AutoVista this case and uh, we will then need to include a polygon including the water border. So let's open the project dialog. We already imported our images, we already imported our tile definition and in the vectors we will now load um, a water area. In our case this can be either a DXF or a shapefile. And when we import this polygon then we need to assign what functionality this polygon is doing. And in our case here, we can double click here on the usage and say, this is now here for the water reflection. So it's a reflection area. And then everything inside the polygon is water. And our polygon is a complex polygon. I will show it immediately. We have not only one polygon, we have here multiple polygons and I want to show it and I will use in our case a yellow color just to make it easier visible in our user interface. So let's say OK and close here and also close the project dialog and I will just zoom here into this area and then we can see here there's here the outer borderline polygon but additionally also we have then here an, another polygon inside the polygon itself so as soon as we have a second polygon, then this polygon is exclusive. So this is inclusive. So everything inside this line is water. The next polygon coming, everything outside the polygon in this case here is then um, not to be used or then the, again, don't use this as water. And then inside this second polygon, we have even a third polygon. And this one is again inclusive. So that means again, it says, okay, inside this polygon, there is water. And this is then what is meant with complex structure. So in our case here, complex polygon. If you have only one polygon showing the border, then you can switch this to no, which is time wise uh, a good choice because it will be much faster to run. So I started here the processing options and just to show for the processing with water reflection, we have to do this in two steps. So first step, we will now here just as I already named the output, create the color corrected autophotos. So in this case, the radiometric corrected, I should perhaps call it. And, and therefore we will not run a single image adjustment because we will use now in this polygon here, this reflection removal function, which will then just work on the inside of these polygons. And I already calculate here uh, the feature detection. So this is not the seam line that will be applied on the mosaic because I don't output the mosaic, but I already calculate a solution for our seam line. It's not needed. We could switch this in the first run out, then we would activate it in the second run, which we will show afterwards. But I already do here saving adjusted images and saving here these um, seam lines. Okay, and in the reflection removal, we will go into the options and see here that we will now add here a base color on top of this area. And this means we will now uh, look here for these illuminated areas and then we will here drape, not paint. Yeah, so it will just still keep the content, but we will use here uh, a base color 
paste here on these water areas so that we can eliminate here these hot spots or these illuminations, water reflections. And this is how strong we will then drape this base color on top of this area. So we can choose if we want to impact it strongly or not. If you don't use a base color, then we will still run here based on um, color and intensity here, the correction. If we say we don't look at the color at all, just on intensity, then you can here even impact and say, I only want to use intensity to do here the correction in this area. So we will in this case here keep the standard setting, which is a good part and therefore we will then use it. For the base color itself, we could use the color picker, which we will not show here in this part, but you can here, there's a function in the options and or tools where you can first grab from this water an area as a reference and assign this color here as our reflection removal color. And that's it. Then we would here hit close in process. And after this is done, I will show them the result and we will then continue from this. So here we go with the result. It's processed now. And we want now to take a look, of course, at the result. And to do this, we will just replace the original images, this ones here, with the new ones. Because when we take a look at the output result, then we can see the names of this new created output color corrected. They are identical like the ones that we now have used as our input. So the only thing we will do is just replace the folder of the location of our images and they will be then our starting point for the second run where we will then use the radiometrically corrected photos. To do this, we can just go to the project dialog, select here all the images with control A or with shift. And then we have here the option to change the image path for the selected images. So in this case, we will here select now this color corrected autos as our folder. And then these are now our new images. And we see already in the background, the images have been updated automatically. And so now we can see here how this correction has been done to our photos. If we zoom in into here this area, then we still see that this is not painted, it's only draped. So we still have the content of the image. We still see here content in it. And depending how strong you want here to drape this content, you can influence this with these parameters in the um, reflection removal part. So if you want to have it less influenced, you move it here to low. If you say this just has to be strongly um, um, influenced, then you move it to high. And that's it. So now we can change the parameters for our final mosaic output. I will just do it and then show you what I changed. So here we go. I changed my output directory. So I will now create my mosaics and we are using the corrected autos as we can see here. But metadata wise, I'm still looking here to my previous run because I already calculated the seam lines. So in this metadata folder here from the previous color corrected autos run, I already have here my um, feature detection um, files. So I don't need to run it, of course, a second time. I can just use them again. And then we will here run a global tilting. We still do a global tilting. Uh, but here, as my colors are nice, I will not run adjusted color only on intensity and two iterations. This is, of course, depending from your data set. And as mentioned, feature detection will be then now applied. Um, and we will then save the mosaic output and run it here with this part. Um, I will here just again generate my seam data. I would not need to do this. This is already part of the metadata folder but um, um, I will just stay with the standard settings and close and process. And after this is finished, we can take a look at our final result. 
So here we go. Our result is here. And just looking here in the previous one here. So this was then processing here from this part. And then it runs here our global tilting and already our feature detections exist. So here, therefore, this does not need to be recalculated, which is, of course, good. And now we can take a look at our final result. To do this, I will just open a second Auto Vista and show you the mosaic in it. So here we go. These are our mosaics that have been generated. And just um, looking in this case here to the other one, here I just deactivated these parts. Um, then we can see now here, again, in this area, this is, was our already um, corrected um, autophotos. And this is then here the mosaic that we generated and um, including here this information. I hope this video shows you um, how you can use in a very effective way the water reflection function in AutoVista to produce high quality mosaics even with strong water reflections as shown here in this example. Well, <laughs> I have to here to change perhaps back to the old ones. Let's do this here and then take a look here at at this uh, original data. So when you have here strong water reflections, then AutoVista is very good to handle this part and to generate nicely radiometric corrected autophotos for the water area. Thank you for watching this video and see you soon. Bye.